Oh, passion the word can be overused. But I'm telling you something, there is no substitute for real, genuine, authentic passion. When people look at me and say, oh, he's just doing this little thing here. My kid can tell you, I scare him. What am I do sometime when I get in the car in the morning when I'm taking you out of school? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's get it done. That's right. Let's go. My daughter, my daughter was like, man, he's the daddy, I love it, but it's, it's too loud. <laughs>
she from um, Santa Clara. She graduated, I think, at 15 or 16. The brother graduated at 15 from uh, from Santa Cruz, UC Santa Cruz, and now he's getting his master's. But 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 I'll, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. The father, because I know him, he's cultivated this whole thinking. Of, they're, 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 everything's possible. I mean, you just go with that premise. You know, you know, it's not possible for me to just run out and start flying to the moon without the benefit of a rocket. But I mean, I'm, so, I'm, just, I'm not being silly, but I'm saying everything is possible. And like I tell my son, we sit there, we talk about it, and people say, you know, when you get older, because I'll be 55 in June, and they go, they go you know, when, when you start getting older, you know what, you start to lose that. I go, you know what, I love technology. I embrace technology. I love being around young people and seeing, feeling all that energy. And he's like, okay, you know what, uh, I, I go to my son and say, man, I wonder if you can do this, what would happen? Or, hey, you know, I have my iPad. Where is a, I need a USB port. How come they don't come out with a USB yeah. port for, and then all of a sudden we, I'm looking at, I'm like, Jordan, what in here, what? I said, guess what? <laughs> Samsung's got one with a USB port on it. <laughs> What's up with Apple? The with a USB port, okay? But all that to say, we, he yeah. can even attest to it. I'm always coming up with these ideas, but man, I'm always a buck short and fail. <laughs> <laughs> but the only good thing is that it's my thinking, really. And I'm just like, hey, I'm thinking. And so all I'm saying is, for you guys to move forward, you kind of have to be thinking like that. Don't restrict yourself. Don't put barriers in front of yourself. It's very, very important that you think like that. That's what creativity, where do you think all this innovation comes from? It doesn't come from people just like, that's the way we always do. <laughs> Can't be changed. I'm dealing with a software pro uh, uh, package right now. It's an enterprise software solution. And I'm looking at it, and I said, why can't it do this? Why can't it do this? And so the person that helped us get it said, well, that's just, it has to pull from different parts of the software to get the information to compile. I said, why? Because <laughs> it's taking me way too long to get this information. Isn't that amazing? You know, the amazing thing is, usually things, you know, you, you, you make a phone call, you send a snail mail, you're doing it. Now, we had a, our first computer with a 286 or 386. Uh, with a megabyte or whatever, and all of a sudden now, you know, you, that's slow. Then all of a sudden you get one gigabyte, and you get this, and this much RAM, and then it's still slowing up. I gotta wait all the two seconds for this. <laughs> What's happening? IT, you guys gotta fix this. But again, it's not just accepting the status quo. So many people just accept the status quo, and you can't, I, I keep saying you can't. I said, I don't want to do it. I'm always going to question why. So I got the CEO of the company and I said, well, I need, I need you to do this, I need you to do this, and, and, and well, he doesn't do this. And I said, why? <laughs> well, because that's what you, why? Then you're not giving me a reason. <laughs> you're giving me an excuse. That's right. Okay, you're limiting your own thinking. I'm a, I'm a customer. I need you to think a little bit differently about the software you're selling to us. And if you don't, then we're going to be looking for another solution. So when you're sitting in your R&D, we'll put this in your parking lot of ideas, and, but I need you to really take them seriously. So everybody in this room has a part to play in this organization meeting its objectives. Tony, I, want you, I want you to understand the United Parcel Service is the hub, the business, but we are all spokes in this wheel. And we have, we're only as strong as each spoke in that wheel. I was looking at television, and they had these, you know, these extreme bikers with the, on the mountain bikes, going all kind of terrain. And after one of the bikers, they said, hey, you know what? What do you do to prepare the, you know, your bike? And he talked about the bike. And he goes, he says, one of the most important things that I do before I ride is I check the spokes. He says, because if one spoke is loose, and I hit a bump just right, the whole wheel can collapse. And going at the speed they're going down those, those, those hills, guess what? It could be catastrophe. You all are spoke in this wheel. You're not a silo working all by yourself. I don't want to know anybody. No, you are spoke in this wheel called State Compensation Insurance Fund. And it, I'm not saying that to make it kind of, you know, impersonal or anything like that, but we got to acknowledge that's where we work, right? Mm -hmm. You 
all are spokes in this wheel, and you're only this organization in this wheel is only as strong as each spoke. You got to believe that. Yeah. Trying to convince yourself of it. Mm -hmm. Never thought about it, mm -hmm. but it's really true. Mm -hmm. Think about it. If somebody messes up <clears throat> because they don't care, guess what? Something's going to happen. It can have an effect. One person said the wrong thing to a customer, <laughs> guess what, they don't have the account anymore. Don't tell me it doesn't have an impact. They can have a tremendous impact. So you all are trying each and every day embracing it, what it is you do for this organization and for the team. Say, hey, you know, Tony, I'm falling a little bit behind. I want to know if I can get an extension because I know it's due next week. Can I get a, a couple of days or another day? Hey, thank you, for, thank you for letting me know. Yeah, go ahead, not a problem. But, if you don't, I'm going to hold you accountable. I have to, because it's got to be fair for everybody, right? Right. You can't let people just do things and not hold them accountable for the decision, the thing that they've done. You, doesn't mean they go somewhere else. It just means i got to confront you and i got to talk to you about it. Embracing accountability, I embrace it. Hey, you know what, I'll tell you. I make commitments to my team. If I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Whew, I have this young lady uh, named Eileen. We would have a meeting. Eileen was my one of my assistants, and we sit there, and every time we sit to have a meeting, Eileen's writing things down. And she said, and she and she said, Tony, so you're gonna do that, right? And I said, Yeah, I'm gonna do it too. By when? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll do it, I'll, I'll do it by um, let's say March 27th. Okay, good, good. So, yeah. All of a sudden I get this email. It was almost instantaneous. She went back to her death. And she's got all my commitments and her commitments lined out. And she calls me. She just said, "Yo, I haven't heard from you. How you doing?" But you know what? Some people say, "I don't work for you. You work for me. I don't have you holding me accountable." No, I'm gonna tell you something. It made me better. It, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. It made me better because I knew that in order for me to be an effective leader or team leader, I had to have people that can. Trust me to do what I said I'm going to do. And she didn't take me to the carpet, but she says, hey, if I didn't, if I was going to miss something, she's going to hold me accountable. And I gave her permission to do that. Because if I'm going to demand something of her, i got to demand it of myself. And a leader will do that. A good, effective leader will do that. Give gifts. Now, he said, what do you mean gifts? This is constructive input. It's not being critical. I was sharing with someone, and they said, yeah, just a gift. And I said, yes, it's a gift. But could, because when your person really gives you a gift, what they're doing is they're saying, here's something that I see. And you may want to think a little bit differently about it. I'm just coming to you because I want to help. That's a gift. That's a gift. Oh, you're lazy, and you didn't get that done. You know what, if you don't get that done, you know what, I don't even want to see you. That's not a gift. That will tear people down. Let me take some words are powerful. All of us know that, right? Words are powerful. That's right. So how we treat each other, what the things that we say, we want to give gifts. Leaders set clear expectations. They provide the team with the tools and resources they need to get the job done. Guess what? You can't ask me to do something I don't have the resources to get it done. Right? I know for me, I was talking to a person and they have a corporation and what they want to do is expand their, their business globally. So one of the resources they need, they didn't have it internally, is they needed someone that had global marketing and sales experience, so they had to go out and get it. They said, if you want to get here, I need someone with that kind of experience. They gave them that. The company grew. Why? Because they had that resource. They made a commitment. If I have that resource, I can get it done. Hold them accountable. Reward for performance. You know what, most CEOs around us, one of the things everybody have a problem with was CEO pay, right? I'm not going to tell, tell the guy that there was the CEO of a well-known uh, uh, brick and mortar, let's call it, and he took over as a CEO, and from the day he took over, every decision he made started to affect not only stock price, but affect the value of that organization in terms of his employees. People were revolting. And I'm going to tell you something, then the board of directors fired him. But guess what? 
He left with, I think it was $25 million comp, uh, comp, uh, uh, severance package. Run the thing in the ground, and then get $25 million. Heck, I can do that for two. <laughs> I don't need $25 million to run a company in the ground. I do it for a lot less than that. You didn't get reward for performance. And that's one of the things that everyone, we had, uh, 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 Owens Corning particularly, we had, the company had what they call a, a, a company incentive plan, that if the company met all of its goals and objectives, guess what, there's a certain portion of your salary you would get back in terms of the percentage. I'm like, hopefully I'm not saying it. But you get that. Then you set your own professional uh, professional goals, and if you meet that, that represented another percentage. Then if the team met its goals, got another percentage. So they had different, and I'm gonna tell you something, when, I, when Owens Corning shut down, it's amazing. I, my wife would tell you that it was amazing. All of a sudden, they get this check in the mail after they had shut down our division and shut down the whole company, as a matter of fact, our whole company, because it's a separate company, shut it all down. Oh, man, it must have been six months, seven months later. You get a check in the mail for $7,000. And I'm going, from all this corner, whoa, what's up with this? So I called HR and I said, hey, I just got a check for $7,000 in the mail. What's going on? And they said, they said oh, no. When the company was in play, the overall company met its, uh, met its, uh, its objectives, and guess what? You were part of the team during that period, so you get the $7,000. That was cool. I, I tell you something, my respect for the company just grew. <laughs> but really, because that's one thing that they did. They wanted to make sure that they rewarded people for performance, so they had those different levels. And I'll tell you something, I personally am a big believer in rewarding for performance. I don't reward you just because you're there. Mm -hmm. But part of the one-on-ones that we did is I let people know what they, all along the way, how they're going against their goals, so we have metrics. So I let them know. But then, so they can pretty much know that guess what, I'm meeting or exceeding my expect, the expectations, and guess what, we were able to compensate them accordingly. Leaders have a different expectation, right? You have to have a different expectation of the leader. They just got to step up. I'm going to hold any leader that works with me to a high standard. I expect they to be held to a high standard. I'm going to pass these out. You don't have to do it right now, but as a leader, you lose <coughs> certain rights. To equate success with your individual area or department, not to be candid and open. As a leader, I have to be candid and open. Now, hopefully you have a culture you can do that, but the culture that I create and cultivate is to be candid and open. I want to know where I stand. I don't want people talking behind my back. If you think I'm a jerk, tell me, you know, I don't think you're a very nice person. <laughs> just don't, just say, say it to me and tell me, let's talk about that. And that's why I still have a lot of relationships with people that, I, that worked for me in the past. I still communicate with them. Because they knew that's who I was. You lose the right to blame someone else. Have your friendship with coworkers influence your decisions. Use busyness as an excuse not to get things that, ooh. For my leadership, my, my leadership philosophy, one of my pet peeves is this. If I ask you, did you get it done? No. Why? I was too busy. <laughs> Everybody's busy. <laughs> my kids are busy. I know five and six years old that have been, they're looking at their calendar, they gotta be here, they gotta be there, they gotta, they gotta play day at five, they gotta man, and the kids are, man, this is, this is, mom, this is a busy day. Everybody's busy. Right? So don't, you can't, as a leader, you can't use that as an excuse not to get things done. I'm just too busy. You lose the right to be negatively critical, and you have lose the right to be right all the time. Just because you're a leader, you're not right all the time. No one's right all the time. Except me. <laughs> Believe me, I know I'm not right all the time. Sometimes I think I am. <laughs> and then my wife and my kids all of a sudden, hey, you know what? <laughs> You need to kind of check yourself because you, you're not right all the time, mister. So I'm going to give you these. There's a couple of other ones. Uh, you lose the right to retaliate, lose the right to complain, to be a, morning, a, a Monday morning quarterback, not to be present in conversations, 
Like I was sharing a little, don't go look over past me. I need you to be present in the conversation. And as a leader, that's your responsibility to the people that you lead. You need to be present. You lose the right to pick and choose to whom you will relate. You lose the right to have a meeting outside a meeting. And that was one of my biggest things. Going to a meeting, oh yeah, I'm in a bed meeting, and now I'm going to, oh, you know what, let's go and have a couple of cups and talk about the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> now, as a leader, you lose rights to sit there and have a meeting outside a meeting. These little sidebar conversations, taking, taking your phone out in a meeting and kind of <laughs> texting. Lead, true leaders have to be engaged. You lose certain rights. You don't gain all these rights as a leader. You lose certain things because there's going to be a high expectation. Now, are you the leader? Are you one of the leaders in this group, or are you actually one of the people that are actually getting it back? Um, the so one of the things that I would try to do to express your frustration, nobody, no one wants to feel like they're totally alone. Hopefully, you build up a relationship with someone. You know, we always talk about it in my family. You, know, you can be frustrated, uh, but what you want to do is use it in a constructive way, meaning go find someone you can actually talk to. Hopefully, you have somebody. And I think that's another reason why they talk about having a friend that works, somebody you can actually share things with, your frustration with, and then bounce ideas off. How the best way to do that? You know, one of the things that we used to do is when I get frustrated, I used to start asking questions. Okay, I put forth this idea. Did it just not make sense? I, I want to start stimulating some conversation. I need you to help me. Was it foolish? So I start asking questions. And then that gets them engaged in a conversation. Because I'm not, me personally, I'm not going to let people just shut me off. That's just my, it's just, it's just me. Because if I allow somebody to shut me down, then guess what? That's on me. That's me personally. Some people see it different. But I'm not gonna, now, I'm not going to stand up on a chair and start fighting and all that other kind of thing, but I'm going to ask some questions. Mm -hmm. You know, is there a difference? Um, Jennifer works in different departments than mine, but what I heard Jennifer say is that people come to her with some of their problems, and then she comes up with a solution, and they dismiss and be frustrated. Let them come up with the solution, and then therefore they're held accountable for it, and that will release some of your frustrations because they're problem solving their own problems. I love it. Mm -hmm. How much you pay for your bucks? <laughs> no, I but, pay $2. Yes. <laughs> but really, and I'm, thank you for asking that question because I think it's important because all of us go through things like that. But I want to tell you three simple truths about each one of you. The thing that, one of the things that really drives me, I always encourage my kids, I encourage everybody I can with these three simple truths about you. You all are valuable. You all are valuable. Do you believe that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. The last time I, I talked to a young lady at, uh, uh, when I spoke at Sleep, she said, sometimes I don't feel valuable. Mm. Sometimes I don't feel valuable. But I said, you're valuable. Mm. There's a reason why you're here. Your life has purpose, it has meaning. Some of us still trying to find out what that is, that's okay. But there's a reason why you occupy space and have weight. There's a reason why you, when you sit down in a chair, it depresses. Not because you need to be it's just the way that thing works. You have value. You have value. You are valuable. You are significant. You have an opportunity each and every day to have an impact, a positive or negative one, or whatever power. You have an opportunity to make an impact. You are significant. One person can change the world. How many times have, is, how many times have you heard one person doing something? that has a tremendous impact. It may be a video of a baby doing something or whatever. There's all kinds of things that have impact. You are valuable, you're significant, and lastly, you have what it takes. You will struggle, but you have what it takes to do and be whatever you want to be or do. And the only one that put a barrier in front of that is you.